Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to go through are some stretches and some exercises to treat thumb joint dysfunction. Now for a lot of people that dysfunction tends to be something in the form of arthritis. So it's really important that we keep the tissue around the thumb joint uh, supple and strong and able to function really well. And towards the end of the video, like we always try and do with these videos is, we're going to go through a few really easy stretches to help improve the function of the thumb joint, but we're also going to tie it into something that a lot of people probably don't realize about thumb dysfunction. When you go through one really interesting exercise to try and help the thumb that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So please hang around to the end of the video and we'll go through that together. So one of the things that we always want to look at with thumb stretches uh, we want to take very strong note of what's called the thena eminence, so the big patty, fatty bit of tissue um, that make up the pad of the thumb. And just down from that, just, just before we get to the wrist, is where that carpometacarpal joint is, or the CMC joint. And that can often be the, um, the source of a lot of arthritic changes for a lot of people. Now, what we want to do to try and improve the function of that area is we want to start by trying to stretch out the tissue of this thena eminence, or this thumb tissue. And one of the things you really want to do here is if you can reach around and grab the tip of your thumb, I like to place my other thumb in the back of that, just to give me something to, to leverage. And we're going to gently pull that thumb away. So we're trying to open up the thumb. And what we always want to do with these exercises is you want to try and just pull your thumb in different directions just to try and find where the best uh, avenue for your tightness might be. So for me, when I pull it more towards my little finger, I maybe feel it a little bit more towards the, I guess, the side here. However, when I pull it down more towards my wrist, I really feel like I can start to generate a bit more tightness in the center of that thumb. So where you find it's important to you, now if your thumb joint itself is quite tender, then obviously be gentle in terms of how far back you pull it. But essentially we want to pull it back until you feel some tightness. And then like we do with any stretch, so remember that just holding a stretch on its own doesn't necessarily affect the kind of change that we want either immediately or long term. So what you need to do is you need to push back against that stretch or tense up the muscles that you're trying to stretch. So what that looks like is you're trying to push the thumb back up into the other hand or you're trying to squeeze those muscles. And what that does is that gets your brain and nervous system involved. It really tries to separate that tissue so that when you relax, that tissue relaxes as well. And then once you've done that, you should feel it goes a little bit further again. So I'm gonna pull that thumb back, again, still stabilizing with the other thumb. Pulling that thumb back and moving it around, trying to find that tightness and give it a nice squeeze to make those tissues tense up, then relax and see if you can go further. Keep repeating that as an exercise. And what you'll hopefully find is, and if you can see this on the video, but you should find that it goes a fair bit further straight away. So if I did the same thing on the other side, push back against it, relax, push back against it, relax, push back against it, in a short amount of time, you should hopefully see that range of motion improves very quickly. It's a really effective way to, to take away some of the extra tension, the extra load around that thumb joint. Now, the second thing is, there's nothing stopping you digging your thumbs into your thumb joint. So we know that that tissue around the thumb can get tight, so there's no problems with digging in there, trying to free up that tissue. So scrape that tissue away from the bone, get in there and go looking for those bits and pieces. There can often be some real tenderness in the crease, so feel free to dig that thumb in around there to see what's there for you. Take some time to, to figure that out and then try and free that up as well. So, so that's exercise number two. Really, really simple one. We want to do the whole relaxed stretching, a little bit of self-massage through there as well. Self-massage is great because it's very specific. If you, spined it, if, if you find a spot that's very, very tender, then feel free just to hover over that spot with some pressure, allow that tissue to give a little bit, and then continue on trying to do some frictions or some deep tissue massage through that area. And again, we're looking to make sure that it feels and moves further than it did before. And it should always feel a little bit nicer from that. Now, the third exercise, this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. So again, we've talked about this a lot in the videos, but one of the things that we see in the medical industry is that we can tend to be very narrow focused. So if you have a thumb joint problem, it's very easy to just be focused specifically on that thumb joint, doing whatever we can to improve that thumb joint without taking a step back and realizing that it's connected to everything else. And then one of the things that's really important here is if you were to, to turn your arm onto the side and wiggle your thumb around, what you may see, and you may see this on me, hopefully you can pick it up, is you'll start to see some muscle flicker at the base of your wrist. 
And that's because the muscles that attach to some of the tendons that anchor into your thumb actually reside in your wrist. And they, sorry, they pull that thumb back and around when they move. So it stands to reason that we wanna make sure that the muscle bellies of those muscles are nice and loose. So again, with your thumb, you can dig into those areas and go looking for some of that tenderness as well. And you, you might find some hidden tightness and tenderness that you may not have realized was there. But what's really important here, what we can do is we can um, make this a more sensitive uh, exercise, we can make it a more powerful exercise. But once you've found some tightness, if you tuck your thumb into your fist, so not necessarily on the outside, but tuck it into your fist to really tension up some of those muscles and close your fist around it to keep it there, what we wanna do is we wanna find a tight spot and we wanna bend your wrist. So what we're doing here is we're compressing that tissue and then using your wrist motion to try and pull that tissue past your thumb. So digging it in, found a tender spot, then we're gonna bend your wrist down and a little bit towards your little finger side, almost like a down and around. And we're trying to free up, really sheer free some of that tissue. And then what you'll find is not only should your wrists feel looser, but again, those thumbs will hopefully feel a little bit nicer as well. So the idea again is that you dig into that tightness, make the fist, and then keep the pressure on that tightness while you pull your your wrist and your hand away. And we're trying to tension up that tissue. Now, if you have any tendonitis issues in your thumb, this particular motion can be quite sensitive for a lot of people. So, so be gentle. If you find that that's uncomfortable, don't tuck your thumb in, just do it with a regular fist. And you should find that that really helps shear free some of the tissue, feed a lot more slack into that tender, dysfunctional joint or, or muscle um, or thumb itself um, and really, really help. So, so those three exercises are some really simple ones that you can do to feed some more slack into the thumb, help restore as much normal function as possible um, in a very short amount of time. Now, what we said at the start of the video, and this is what I think is really, really interesting about a, uh, about a lot of thumb dysfunction, is clinically, a lot of thumb dysfunction may have a lot to do with dysfunction at the base of your neck. Now this often sounds really strange and really weird and sometimes shocking if you're not necessarily thinking about this because it can sound strange, excuse me, that dysfunction here can affect something all the way down here. It's almost the furthest thing away. But what we often forget is there's a whole bunch of nerves that come from the base of your neck, run out through your arm and go down into your hand and fingers. We know with carpal tunnel that tends to be the, the nerve that goes through this part of your hand and wrist and supplies sort of a bunch of fingers in your hand. There's two other nerves that can supply the hand and affect hand function. One's the ulnar nerve, which comes from your neck, is the funny bone as it goes into your little finger. The other one is your radial nerve. And this comes down from your neck, comes around the side of your elbow, past the tennis elbow area, which again raises an interesting idea. And then it continues in towards that thumb. And it's something that we might find is very hard to prove here but I wouldn't be surprised clinically that there, there might be a strong correlation between the development of neck stiffness, neck tightness, you know, general neck dysfunction here, and over time setting that thumb tissue up to fail. So we know that if the neck gets stiff, it can act as a bit of a kink in a hose where the, the water pressure or the neural sort of conversation that happens with the thumb may start to drop off, which means that it may sort of weaken a little bit or the function of that area may become less. And if that function has been dysfunctional or taken away for a long period of time, there's a, it stands to reason that it might be one of the reasons that asks that tissue, that specific tissue to wear down when the other side may not. And this is really important considering that we're designed to use our thumbs. So I'm always trying to promote the idea that using your tissue alone shouldn't be a reason for it to degrade. Because when you go to the gym, you lift heavy weights, so you do exercise, you do that in the uh, under, with the understanding that that tissue is going to get stronger and better. So it doesn't often make sense that it also wears that tissue down. It should just be adapting in a positive sense forever, unless there's something hidden underneath that that sort of tilts it off its axis or uh, knocks it slightly more dysfunctionally. And then we use that sort of tissue in a different way and that potentially sort of veers us off into a different timeline. So, so what we want to do here, and I urge you to do this at home, it's potentially really powerful is if you have a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, any ball that you have lying around can be really powerful. What I want you to do first is do a movement or an activity that generally annoys your thumb. It could be something as simple as picking something up. You can do the chain link exercise where you squeeze your fingers together and try and pull it apart. 
it can be using the thumb, whatever it is, whatever you know gives you some, um, gives you a warning signal, lets you know that your thumb is still dysfunctional. Then we're gonna take the ball, we're gonna place the ball around the base of your neck. So the bump at the base of your neck is generally about C7, which is the, the lowest level of the neck. We're gonna place the ball on that bump on the bony bit, and then just let it roll straight off to the side and up a fraction. So, and what we're gonna do here is we would normally get you to lie down, and I've done this in a few videos before, but we'll do it sitting up to begin with. So we're gonna find the bump, and for me, I'm gonna do this side. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit and then off to the side so I hit a bony sort of shelf. And then I wanna spend some time moving the ball around until I feel like I hit something that feels either stiff, tight, or tender. And then once I've found that, I wanna compare the exact same spot to the other side and compare which side feels stiffer or tighter. So for me, if I had some thumb dysfunction on this right-hand side for me, this side of my neck doesn't actually feel too stiff or tight. This side feels a fair bit stiffer and tighter for me. Now, again, it may sound strange that not only may the neck be contributing to some thumb dysfunction, but the opposite side of the neck. So we wanna make sure that you can, that you don't have to take uh, my word for this, you can see this happen in real time. So remember, if you've done something beforehand to, um, to see how your thumb feels, then you wanna go looking which part of your neck or which side of your neck feels a bit stiff. So for me, it happens to be this side for you, it may be the other side, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna spend some time in this position, allowing the ball to push into my neck, free up some of those stiff joints, unkink that hose that's potentially been kinked for a while, and is affecting the function and the signaling to that thumb. And once you've done that, I'm gonna move the ball up a tiny bit or down a tiny bit um, until you feel like you hit the next spot. And we wanna systematically work just below the line of the neck, up to sort of mid neck, and capture those, uh, any stiffness or tightness that we find there. So not only should your neck feel a little bit freer straight away, if you then retest your thumb um, tests, if there's some direct consequences coming from your neck, you may feel like it's a little bit better straight away. If you feel a little bit stronger, perhaps your pain wasn't as bad, you may be lucky enough that if you press on a spot in your neck, you may feel some of your thumb symptoms come from, from that pressure. That's really powerful because for too long, we sort of looked at the thumb issue as just the thumb problem and we've divorced it from the idea that it's connected to everything else. So. I wanted to go through that because it's often a, it's severely missed a lot when we're dealing with thumb issues. At the very least, you need to clear your neck. You don't have to have neck pain, but if there's some joints at the base of your neck that are stiff and tight, it may correlate with some dysfunction that you've accrued in that thumb. So clearly you've got to treat the thumb, which the first three exercises will hopefully help improve that. But we want to have a really sophisticated conversation and say, well, look, let's have a look at your neck as well. Let's see if that's either the cause of it, the root cause of your problem, What's something that's keeping those symptoms um, there and stopping you from getting better long term to the point where even if you have some arthritis in your thumb, we can start to ask a question as to whether that has to be problematic. So you might still see it on a scan before and afterwards, but we can ask that question and say, well, look, does it actually have to be sore? Does it still have to be tender? Does it still have to hurt to use if everything else is functioning really well? So that's something that's really important to consider. And hopefully that's useful. So, so if you're looking for some ways, to, uh, some stretches for the thumb, hopefully those are a really eclectic bunch of things. And hopefully there were some there that you may not have seen before. Um, they all seem to work really well. So again, please don't take my word for it. Hold me to it definitely, but don't take my word for it. Do some stretches, uh, some movements first. Get a gauge of how you feel. Do these stretches, and after each time you've done them, reassess to make sure that you've seen something change. And let me know in the comments how you go. Um, it's really important because if you don't see a change after doing an exercise, there's every chance that you haven't made change and you may have just wasted your time. So we need to find out how you can improve that. Maybe that you weren't doing it perfectly. Maybe there's a, a different part of you that needs to change for that to feel better. But that test retest model is really important. And we, we need to apply that to um, concepts and ideas that um, push the boundaries a little bit so that we, we don't have to guess, particularly with the neck, where a lot of people think, gee, maybe can't see how that relates. Maybe this is some false um, advice. Maybe it's not good enough, but we know these things because by testing and retesting, we can see that things begin to change. So you guys deserve that same experience. So let me know in the comments how you go below. So, um, so again, hopefully that was really helpful. If you did find it helpful, let us know by leaving a like below. And as always, if you would consider subscribing to the channel, it really helps you keep up to date with these videos as they come out almost daily. 
Uh, it really helps support us and helps these videos get out to more people, which is really the idea behind them. We just want to help as many people as possible um, in ways that they may not realize that there's some dysfunction, that there's some very simple solutions or some simple ways that you can get better um, as well. So, so again, thanks for joining us. Hopefully that was helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next one.